Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, uh, we're saddened to, to hear the news of Johnny Major's passing today. Uh, I have a very dear friend of mine who played for him, and uh, I know the impact that he made uh, in my friend's life, and I'm sure he made an impact on many, many people. And uh, we are certainly thinking about him, his family, and uh, all the players that he affected in his life. And so uh, we're sad to hear about that news. Um, it's good to see y'all. And um, I'm ready to uh, answer any questions you might have. All right, All right. Kelly, 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 Stacy. Kelly Stacy. Oh, yes, sorry. Hey, Coach, how are you? Wait just a minute, Kelly. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Can okay, you hear me now? I'm good. Mm -hmm. okay. um, with protests against racial inequality and police brutality going on around the nation, including in Fayetteville, have you addressed those issues with the team in the past week or so? And if so, what have those conversations looked like? Well, we certainly addressed our team. Uh, and those conversations are between myself and our football team. But uh, we certainly have uh, spoke about it uh, for the last uh, week or whenever, however long ago it was, that when it uh, started, and uh, we talk about it daily. I know there was a social justice forum for some of the student athletes on campus yesterday. I was just wondering if you were involved in that. A social justice forum? Yes, it was uh, on Zoom yesterday. Student athletes put it on, I believe. No, ma'am, I, I wasn't aware of it. All right, thanks, Coach. I'm not supposed to say, ma'am. Uh, Trey Biddy. Hey, Coach. Hey, Trey. Hey, Trey. How you doing? Great. Hey, I was curious with everybody coming back and after you guys kind of get into the groove of thing with, you know, going through physicals and all that stuff, what, what will an average day look like during the voluntary workouts for these guys? Yeah, we, we still are able to meet <clears throat> eight hours a week with our kids. We're not, we're not using all of that, and, and uh, we're using a majority of it with our freshmen. Uh, we're having separate meetings. Uh, basically with our young guys we're starting from the uh, beginning with them trying to teach them the playbook and basically trying to get to know those guys a little bit on zoom uh, they also are, are involved in some virtual workouts uh, as they're not here yet um, and then with our uh, older guys or the guys who's been here um, they're meeting uh, an hour uh, a week individually with their coaches, twice a half hour uh, Monday, Wednesday, and then they are uh, they're involved in all the team meetings, which we have uh, four four days a week with them, and then uh, uh, five five with the freshmen, and then special teams meetings are involved in those uh, as well. Uh, then weight room wise, we're going uh, five days a week in the weight room. There's unlimited. Uh, hours involved there right now simply because it's voluntary uh, so they're staying pretty busy uh, I don't have a whole lot of, of our, our guys that are in summer school at this point I think we have 22 right now so uh, they have a lot of time on their hands so we're trying to uh, take up some of that void here are they do they have access to everything so if the players wanted to get together on their own and go run their own voluntary practice and stuff, but they have access to the field or uh, is, is there still some restrictions on that kind of stuff? You know, Trey, we're, we're the nutrition part of it. Uh, we're, we're, our, our um, um, Jones center is open and uh, uh, that part of it's handled um, with no problem at all. Uh, the fields while we're still working through that a little bit um, with it, with the SEC and, and with, with our own availability here, uh, obviously uh, we'd like to have a field available for them so they can go throw on their own and things of that nature. As of right now, we're not allowed to watch them do anything, uh, not only throwing and catching, but 
in the weight room as a as a uh, coach. Now the strength coaches obviously they ha they need to be there for safety reasons and and to teach them how to lift correctly. But right now we're having no access with them whatsoever for the month of June as it is now. And to answer the field question, we're still working on that just a little bit. Uh, I think we'll we'll get that answer uh, within the next two or three days, and obviously we start up Monday. Thanks, coach. Yes, sir. Tara? Tara, do you have something? What about Tom? See you. Tom, you're on mute. There we go. How's that? Can you hear me? Yeah, got you. Hey, Sam, good to talk to you. So how many of uh, the players do you think will be available to start doing this on June 8th when, when it opens back up? And your New Orleans guys, there's four for sure, uh, Fouché, Parker, and Bush, and um, Burl. Have they, did they have to quarantine or are they in the process of that? They did. They, they, they had to quarantine. And um, so to answer your question, on June the 8th, uh, we should have – uh, our entire team minus about five to seven uh, that won't be here quite a couple of them uh, were waiting on transcripts and things of that nature but uh, almost our entire team will be here June 8th of course it's voluntary but um, we think we're going to have almost 100 percent of the team here Okay, and then a two-parter. You know, what's it going to feel like to for that step to take place? That you know that progress is being made, and also you were uh, uh, at the deal last night in Fayetteville. And I wonder what your kind of personal statement is about being at the at the protest last night. Well, the protest was powerful. I'm glad I had an opportunity to go down there. Um, uh, our team, uh, a lot of the kids on the team were there as well. Um, um, we had asked them not to be there late. Uh, we certainly were not in any shape or form asking them not to go down there because I wanted to go down there. Um, but the, the protests had gotten dangerous at some points in some places once it, the sun went down, you know, once it got darker, once the um, protests were later. And so we just asked our team uh, that if they could and they felt good about it, that we'd like for them to leave before sunset. And they did. And it was very powerful. I mean, uh, uh, I was very honored to be a part of it. And, and I was glad I was able to go down there along with others on our coaching staff and our football team. And then the second part of that was just the, the step that June 8th represents and kind of pushing y'all forward. You know, um, it's going to be awful good to get them back. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing that they can get back here. Um, I'd be lying to you if I knew how much interaction we're going to get to have with them. You know, uh, we still have issues of, getting in the building and there's one entrance to the building and the bottom line is that entrance is not over here by my door and we're not able to go into the weight room so we're going to have to have a lot of feedback from our strength coaches and all that but the greatest thing is to know exactly where they are that they're here and that they're being able to get in conditioning and obviously we'll continue our zoom meetings with them but uh, it sure going to feel more like a football team and things of that nature of getting them here on campus. I'm excited to get them back. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Bobby. Hey, Sam. Good to talk to you again. Uh, coaches like to have control. You know, they like to know what's going on with their players on a daily basis. How tough for, has it been for you and the coaching staff to really not know what these guys are doing or being able, able to do as far as working you know, out? I'll be honest with you. I've, I've heard different coaches speak about this. Uh, I trust our kids, and I trust that they are doing uh, what we ask them to do. Um, 
obviously we've had constant contact with our guys. There's reasons behind that. One of them is obviously to see what they're doing, uh, how they're doing with the lifts. Uh, but we chose to trust. We, our big deal was why can't you come back in as good a shape as if you were here? And the bottom line is uh, we trust that our kids are going to be in outstanding shape when they get back. Have you had any interesting stories from players uh, that have had to go, you know, bench press cinder blocks or carry bales of hay that can't access a gym or has everybody kind of had access to the normal stuff? No, you know, there was some guys that's, you know, using people as weights and, you know, on their back and different things of that nature, but nothing, nothing too crazy. You know, they can't send it to us. So it's just something over Twitter that you're able to see or Facebook or Facebook's for, my age people, but, <laughs> you know, something. Thank you, sir. Nate Allen? Yeah, uh, Sam, do you, do they, uh, as far as the weight workouts, I mean, do, you, do they start slowly or do they just start, like, pick it up, like, wh where you expect them to be when they lift them? Uh, no, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to start, we're going to, we're going to start, slow with our kids you know the biggest what you don't want to do is get them in here here and go so rapid that you're uh, injury prone we're gonna we're gonna find a base we're gonna find where they're at obviously we can't test them i wanted to but uh ncaa uh, said we can't test our kids when they get back in here so um to see where they're at but we'll find out but we're gonna start we're gonna start slow with them uh, we have plenty of time uh, to get them in shape, and uh, we're going to use an extra day than we normally would, and that, therefore uh, that's part of the reason for the extra day because we're going to go a little bit slower with them. Also, if somebody does um, use detecting that they have uh, COVID-19, kind of how many people get quarantined? I mean, do you have to quarantine the people on the wait staff? How, how, what kind of a what ifs on that? Well, it's anybody who's come in contact with them and uh, that right now that's a 10 day uh, isolation basically. Um, so it just depends, you know, that's why right now we're at 10 foot, 12, 10 to 12 foot in the weight room. Uh, so uh, the contact won't be made with them. You know, obviously we're not uh, doing anything combative, uh, or anything of that nature. So uh, if someone had it and they have been uh, together or close to somebody else on our team, uh, then they're going to have to be quarantined as well. And that's a 10 day process as of right now. Thank you. Hutch. Nate actually took my question right there. So I'm good. Otis. Hey, Sam, can you hear me? Hey, how you doing, guy? Good, buddy. Can you, okay. Hey, uh, is uh, Jerry Jacobs going to play safety or corner, or do you know yet? Uh, he, he's on our board at corner. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, it just depends on uh, – how we are there at that position and whether he's a starter, obviously if he's able to start, we'll leave him there. We're going to try him at corner first. Obviously we feel like it's a little bit easier to move a guy from corner to safety than it is safety to corner. Right. Okay. Uh, on this one, uh, Cottrell Wallace, is there any update on him of his status or anything, Sam? Yeah. Cottrell Wallace will not be on our football team. Okay. And uh, from what I'm understanding, he's going to go to a junior college. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Coach. Uh huh. Matt Jones. Matt, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I don't have any questions. It's good to talk to you, Matt. Uh, 
Uh, let's work back around the time. Okay, um, so TJ Hammonds, is he back on scholarship? And do you have any other uh, news like that in terms of scholarship movement from the winter? No, the only, the only thing is uh, we put TJ Hammonds on scholarship yesterday. Uh, he signed it uh, yesterday, and, uh, and uh, we're happy to be able to do that. What did you see from him that allowed you to, to make that decision? He's fast. He's got a lot of speed. And um, uh, you can beat people two ways as far as physically. You can beat them with speed or you can beat them with bigness. You can beat them with large humans. And right now, a little faster for us to get fast guys than it is to get a whole team of big guys. So, uh, let's, you know, he's fast. But the bottom line is he did what we asked him to do uh, in school. And he did what we asked him to do in the off season, the eight week program we were here. He is athletic and he did what we asked him to do. So in my opinion, he earned uh, the right to get his scholarship back. Okay, and talking to Rakeem, he said that you guys had maybe four conversations about, you know, whether to, whether to declare or come back. And uh, at first he probably was gonna go the other way, but he just heard from you and then he went back and talked to his parents and made that call. What can you, to the extent you can, the discussions with Rakeem about, you know, this season. When you have those discussions with kids that are debating whether to leave or not, the number one thing is you have to find out their NFL eval. You know, you have to find out what their worth is in the in the National Football League. And we had a conversation about that. And then at that point, you kind of have – you have to let them know how, how much you'd like to have them back. But it's like at Georgia, you know, you had a conversation with Andrew Thomas and Isaiah Wilson, and their eval came back first round, and you're – what do you say? I mean, bye. You know, I mean, you know, there's not a whole lot you can sit there and say when a guy's going to sign $28 million guaranteed and six and a half, seven million dollars $7 guaranteed. Um, but there's so many others that aren't in that particular position. And so we talked to him about it. Uh, we found out um, about things that he needs to work on to improve uh, for his value to go up. And uh, because his value is not going to go up, up, he should have went out. And so we basically talked to him about how we can help him increase his value. Uh, and I don't ever believe that he – really wanted to leave the, the football program. You know, I think he was wondering, what is my status at this time if I leave? And I think certainly him coming back, he had a great off season. It's going to help our football team, obviously. But I believe that we can help him as well uh, in getting upgraded in the draft. Just briefly, what kind of ways? How, how can he be a better back? Well, he has, he has to continue to catch the football better. I think that's one of the things that came back on his evaluation. And, and we're going to give him opportunities to um, pass protect a little bit more and become a more physical uh, pass protector. Uh, obviously, he has great running skills and those things of that nature. But those are two things that we've talked to him about, that he has to improve his game to uh, certainly move up the draft board. And, and to be honest with you, that is one of our jobs one of our jobs is to get our players drafted as high as they possibly can, and we're going to go to work for it. Tara, you have everything? I think she's muted. I, I'm good, actually. Thank you guys so much, though. Bob, are you there? Um, I guess it's me. Uh, Sam, also, some of the ones who have been hurt, like uh, oh, uh, Clary and Wagner and some of them, are they all now able to lift weights and do everything that, that they need to do? Yes. Uh, that's when we come back, that we're, we're going to have guys rolling. And uh, so we were able to get those injuries um, handled uh, quickly as possible uh, in January, somewhere in December. And uh, so we're, we're going to be uh, healthy as we possibly can be uh, starting June 8th. 
And as far as, as drills other than weightlifting, just kind of what was basically just, just running, or do you all have like sprint drills or, or agility drills all set up for them as well? Well, they're, 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 it's, it's strength and conditioning. Uh, so that the weight room will be able to handle those. And then in those will be some agilities. In those will be long stride you know, depending on what day we, we elect to do those. But as far as uh, ball drills and individual drills and all that, that strictly has to be up to the individual player on uh, how they participate in those drills. And, and those would be on their own, uh, non-coach supervised um, at some facility. Thanks. How about Bob this time? Bob. Hey, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, I can hear you, Bob. Hey, Sam. I'm uh, Matt Jones, Patrick. They're on his phone. I'm kind of embarrassed to say I'm less uh, technologically. I'm more technologically challenged than Nate, which is pretty embarrassing. No, no offense, Nate. But, um, hey, I, I know a lot of coaches around the country have tweeted things about the protests. I don't know how many of them gone to protest. Maybe maybe a lot have, but um, what was it about the situation made you feel like it was important for you to be there? Was your whole staff there? Or how many of you guys were there? Well, I didn't, I didn't count the staff. I, I asked them if they wanted to go down there. I was going and, and uh, so I, I can't answer that. Um, what made me go, I think you asked, because I felt like I needed to go. I felt like in my heart I wanted to go. Um, I wanted to support our football team. I wanted to support um, the protest. And that's what I believe in. You know, I, I think you can tweet about stuff. You can, <clears throat> you can do a lot of things. You can take a picture for somebody to show. You can do whatever you want. But actions are strong. And um, I felt like for me, the best way for me to address the situation was to go be a part of what could be a solution. So no other reason. I didn't go down there. If someone would take my picture, I didn't go down there. I got, went down there because I wanted to support the players on our football team and their families. Had you ever been to a protest before? And, and what do you think you got? What was it like? I mean, what what did you get out of it? It was awesome. Uh, number one, uh, uh, the people there were incredible, um, and I don't know. I got a feeling of um, that I was proud I went. I don't know how to explain it. I uh, felt the same way coming in this morning to work. Um, I went by. Uh, the square this morning and it was such a great situation. I mean, you wouldn't even know there was anybody down there. And, uh, you know, so the people of Fayetteville did a wonderful job with the, with the protest and I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah, and I can slip in a couple more since I got stifled earlier. Um, Hunter said last week, you know, you're seeing a lot of schools, even a lot of big schools, uh, staff are taking pay cuts, furloughs. Hunter said that nobody's doing that in Arkansas on, you know, the academic side or the athletic side yet. Um, how happy are you about that, that nobody, at least for now, having to take pay cuts or furloughs? Well, I mean, I can't say I'm sad about not taking a pay cut. I mean, it'd be like you. I mean, <laughs> if you had your choice to take a pay cut or not, I'm sure you wouldn't, but here's, here's well, you'll have to answer that one. But the, will, bottom I, I line is, the bottom line is, is that we will do whatever we need to do to have success at Arkansas and keep all programs alive. And if we need to take a pay cut, we'll, we'll take a pay cut. I mean, it is what it is. The circumstances have changed and we got to roll with it, whatever it may be. That's what we have to do. But every program 
at the University of Arkansas is important. So if it takes a salary, uh, part of a salary to keep another program uh, alive, then that's what we'll do. And then just one last one. Who is your friend who played for Johnny Majors? Have you ever met Johnny Majors, been around him, know him at all? You know, I met Johnny Majors, I, I believe. I, I don't know positively, but I believe when I was at Tennessee, when I was coaching at Tennessee, and uh, Rob Bokes is his name. And Rob Bokes uh, and I coached, and we're on the same staff at Kansas. And uh, he speaks very, very highly of him. And uh, I think Rob was a pretty good player for Iowa State there. But they go back to a reunion all the time. And, and you know what it is. If you go back to a reunion, you're going back to see somebody, and it's important to you. And he would always go back to see Johnny. Okay, thanks, th thanks, Dan. Th thanks, Kyle. You're welcome. Trey, Biddy, Michael. Coach, there's been some talk about uh, something like an OTA type of deal, yeah. maybe mid July or something. I was wondering if you've heard anything on that. What your thoughts on maybe how that might play out, and in, in, in conjunction with fall camp? Well, when all this started happening, Trey, I got on the phone with with the NFL folks because. My feeling was because of spring ball and all those things, uh, I felt like we needed an OTA situation where we could at least go out and, and you know, you talk about injuries. Uh, a big part of injuries is not knowing what you're doing, going the wrong direction, not fitting the right gap. I mean, there's, there's, there's conditioning, there's strength, and then there's knowing what you're doing. And, uh, so I did reach out to several NFL teams, express that uh, to the SEC office. Uh, what my feeling were, I, as I understood, there was some other coaches felt the same way. I don't know exactly. Uh, I'm hearing that there might be a possibility mid-July, somewhere in there, that we may get some type of action uh, OTA-wise and all that. We're prepared for it. We're also prepared if we don't get it. But I think it would really help us. It'd be a non-physical type situation, all those things. But we need um, terminology on the field. We need technique on the field. I mean, we need all those things that we didn't have the opportunity to get in spring ball. We need to be able to do it. And it doesn't have to be a tackle situation or anything like that. It, we're just trying to learn. So, yeah, we've talked about it and we're prepared for it. Just depends on what the hour situation is, Trey, to be honest with you, whether how much they're going to give us, eight or 10 hours, depend on if they go to 12, if they go to 20, whatever the hours are. Uh, but we need on the field uh, movement. We need, uh, we, we need walkthroughs, things of that nature that we didn't, we didn't get a chance to get to. I don't know if there's any way to make up for recruiting. Maybe you have some ideas, but the dead period is pushed to July 31st. Do you foresee maybe things – I know there are more commitments right now across the country than there were this time last year, which is interesting. Do you think things will still maybe push back to where maybe more kids sign in the later period versus 80% signed in the early period last year? How do you think things will go? You know, Trey, what I can see right now is I can see a lot of – official visits during the season. You know, I, I think, you know, right now, if you're a young man, you're, you're sitting there going, can I wait 95 days or 94 days or whatever the number is till the first game? Well, that's one program. So if you're going to try to visit five, you're sitting there this summer. And of course you're not being able to do much. I think, I think it'll help the kids when they're able to go back to their high schools, which Arkansas is now, I think Florida and some of the other states are starting to aid Texas. But once they're able to go start doing something, I think it'll help them with recruiting it. Cause right now all they're doing is sitting around and, and reading about themselves or, or, or getting calls and zoom meetings and all those things. So I think that there'll still be a pretty large percentage of guys that sign early. I do. And, like you said, there's more now that are committed than there has been in the past. And I think a lot of that is their minds going, can I wait another 100 days? Can I do this for another 100 days? And the answer is 
No. And I think you've seen a spurt of recruit, recruiting commits going on here lately. And I think a big reason is they came out and said, hey, we're, 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 we're dead till July 31st. And they're just like, well, then I'm going to go ahead and commit somewhere. I don't know that, but that's what I feel. So to answer your question, I think that there'll be a pretty high percentage of people kids still sign early because I think the official visits will amp up, which I think at that point hurts high school football. I do. I mean, it would be hard for you to play a Friday night game and have your mind totally on that Friday night game when you know after the game or it's 530 in the morning you're flying to wherever you're flying to. Uh, so it's just an, like anything, you know and I know, it's just a situation that we're all going to have to deal with. And last question, the number zero is available uh, this year. Have you had any players express interest in the zero? And also, is that a, is that a receiver eligible number? Hey, great question. I asked uh, for the, for the um, rule on who can wear zero. And, um, yes, I have had uh, kids ask me about, the number zero, you know, the bottom line is, I, I, I would assume, I don't know this, but I would assume that whoever wears it is the first player ever to wear zero at Arkansas. Now, I, somebody will correct me if, if they were able to wear it back in, back when I was playing, you know, but the bottom line is, I think it's pretty uh, important. You know, if I was, if I was, I'm not, I don't have anybody currently in zero on the football team. Uh, if we were going to use it, we may, use it for, uh, you know, some type of uh, best best player from the week, most valuable player from the week before, or most valuable scout team player, whatever we may do. We may pass it around this year. But, again, we have to find out who can wear it. Thanks, Coach. Ty Richardson. Coach, are you worried about uh, – you we were talking about rules a little bit earlier. Are you worried about that you guys seem to be, like, following these rules? W would you be worried about some of the other SEC coaches that you guys are going against this fall, maybe toting the line slash crossing the line a bit, little bit heading up to season? No. I mean, they have compliance officers there, so, nah. And then you, you've mentioned before just like the most difficult part of everything going on right now, not necessarily pertaining to social issues, but just with COVID-19 and everything is building relationship with your players. How excited are you just to get them back on campus? And I know you won't be able to obviously do stuff for a little while, but just to have them back in Fayetteville. It's incredible. I mean, that's, that's our, that's my whole life. I mean, that's, that's who I am, you know, um, I'm a coach and it's hard to coach when there's nobody to coach, you know? And so, I mean, that's, we're all excited about them. We love our team. We love the guys on our team. We want them back. And, uh, and uh, we can't wait for that to happen. And we're adamant about it. I mean, that's, that's our whole life and we need these kids back and hopefully they need us. Uh, but, we certainly are excited to get them back, very.